Okay, it's by the Swan Silvertones. It's a VJLP. Uh, some of the first music I really uh, got with was gospel music. And uh, as a matter of fact, the first record I ever made was with a gospel group in Charleston, West Virginia. Yes. It's a super bad record, man. I have to play it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he knows all about our first record. Yeah, I know about some of the first records. I was trying to get clearance on playing some of the early stuff uh, on the air, but uh, we'll get around to that some other night because you'll be up here. I think I know the immediate reaction of most groups who say, look, man, I'd like to play your early stuff. Don't do that. It's well, just, some of it uh, is interesting. Yeah, some of it's interesting nice. because you can see the differences. Uh, I was talking about writing album liner notes last night, and I said that I finally figured out the way to do it was to sign a different name to them all so that years later, man, my name wouldn't be on it because I know how ridiculous it's going to look. <laughs> that much further on. I noticed you didn't have any liner notes in your album. No, no it's because uh, none of us can read very well. None of us can write. Either. Yeah. That's, yeah, right. And, you know, what would you want to say in liner notes? Well, yeah. the only person who could have conceivably written our liner notes would have been Keezy. And by the time that the album came out, it just uh, didn't seem right. Yeah. And to, to even to approach him about it. Yeah. So, uh, we just had to do it. After all, it is a record. It's not a magazine. That's right, it's not a magazine. <laughs> right. right. However, though, if anybody wants to peel back the uh, label, there's hieroglyphics engraved in the wax. Beautiful. <laughs> then you may be down uh, LPs of all over the city. Uh, have you any uh, talk about bookings in, let's say, faraway places as a result of the LP? Yeah, we're going to New York. We're going to New York. We are? Yeah. Huh. We're going to New York. We're going to New York the first of June. The first of June? Like it, yeah. Where are you going to work there? I'm not sure. I think the Cafe Go Go. Yeah. I've heard that. Uh, I see. I like the sound system there to the extent that I dig some of the things that have been recorded there, uh -huh. because they recorded things live and they seem to work pretty well. Yeah, they record. They recorded like the uh, blues That's project, right. but they, but they're like they like have a lot quieter of a scene going than we do. I don't know. I hope to go there and just turn up real loud and play real loud and uh, just uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Lethal doses. <laughs> I know. You know about the sound gun? No, tell me about this. Oh yeah, uh, sound guns yeah. that they're doing things with. There's a whole lot of cycles a second. There's an article in Playboy magazine. Yeah, this is a different, that's, that's ultrasonic high frequencies. Right. This is, a this is low, low frequency, subharmonic. They use a police whistle right. 18 feet across. Right, and, and a, a common uh, air, uh, air, air compressor, air. or whatever the heck it is. And it, and it, uh, it puts out this seven cycle per second thing, which it starts your whole your insides organs. vibrating, and you eventually die. Kill a man five Imagine miles away with a sound. Imagine it. Well, how about if you only had it on you for a little while, man? Would that make it any better? Make you sick. Yeah. In, in fact, when they were testing it out, testing it out, when they were trying, well, whatever they were doing with it to, to see what it would happen, everybody got sick for miles around. They all got sick. They had headaches, you know, and they were, and uh, and everybody was very unhappy with the whole thing. Of course, nobody's as unhappy as us musicians. <laughs> okay, let's Sound get back kills. to your top forty then. Oh, yeah. Here's oh, number yeah. two. This is another gospel thing, which is a little more crazy than the first one. Less discipline, you might say. It's by Charlie Mingus, and and it's called. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, uh, Wednesday night prayer meeting. That's it.
That's Charlie Mingus in Wednesday night prayer meeting. This is Tom Donahue at KMPX 107 on your FM dial. We're playing records until midnight. Our guests tonight are Jerry Garcia and Phil Lesh of the Grateful Dead, who have uh, the number one bestseller in San Francisco with their current Warner Brothers LP. Uh, they're shaking hands, but they don't have the money yet. You know, it's that kind of thing, right? And uh, the album's done unbelievably well outside of town. Uh, I haven't uh, checked your list completely, man. Are you going to place anything from it? No, we don't get a chance to tear it apart or anything like that and say, man, why, well, did, we you, can talk about it. Sure. why did you blow that note there? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you feel about the album yourselves, personally? I feel like it's a turd. Yeah, <laughs> not not where you wanted to be. Well, no, it was where we were at the time. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's something we did. It's all over with. and, uh, and it's... So The next one it certainly won't be anything like that one. No. Yeah. Uh -huh. That one anyway. Yeah. The way we sort of... Uh, that is a it's like that one is sort of an attempt to try and sound like the way you, the, the stuff that we do live with the same instrumentation and everything. There's not really anything unconventional for us in that. But that's impossible to do in the recording studio. Right. So mm -hmm. we're not so going to try and bother. Recording. We're not going to bother doing that anymore. We're just going to like from now on when we go and record. Uh, since the first album is doing so nicely, uh, we hope to let us ha let us have a lot of time in the studio. And next time we'll do a lot more studio stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and try and get into that, which is a whole other thing. Because of the whole problem of of trying to take what live sounds like right. and put it on some kind of tape right. or disc or something. Yeah, you can't do it in a studio. You, could, you might be able to do it if you, could re if you could record a rock and roll band live, you know, at the volumes that we play at, live like at the Fillmore or something mm -hmm. like that. And maybe after about two or three months of every night at the Fillmore, we'd, we'd start to get, you know, good cuts, good enough for an album, I mean, in terms of how clean they were and, and how much we'd like the performance on them and then we'd have something but it'd be such an expensive undertaking and long and everything and and, and the studio facilities are so incredible that we should do something with them mm -hmm. so we're going to go in there you know and try you know something different uh, approaching them from a different angle right. Yeah, right, right, right. right well there are there are people who practice the art of recording and be a little still specter yeah. practice the art of recording now. that's right and uh, uh, when we went in to do the album we didn't know anything about the art of recording. We knew a little bit about music. Well, I well, think we there is a potential of this, though, and that is the art of interpretation. Which interpretation is, of what? The recording? Of, of which nobody has pinned down. No, the art of interpretation of the sound of a group. I think in time it's conceivable that engineers will come along 
who actually hear what groups are doing and know how to transplant that sound. Wouldn't it be more, more likely to assume that the groups would be able to take over the function of the engineer? Oh, yeah, sure. that's very possible. The but I think that's what we're talking about. Yeah, right. I think that's what every group hopes to do, to get to that point where, the, where they can do it. Right. Uh, because, uh, you know, he it remains another brain between you and what you want to do. And so it's a, it's a jump that you have to make into his head and then out onto whatever is recorded. And I don't think it's ever been done successfully, really. I'd say the Except Beatles with the creative. Yeah, well, but once again, it's the Beatles doing their thing, though. It's, they're not doing it through an, I mean, uh, through it's a producer's an head or an engineer. Yeah, well, the engineer obviously yeah. has been turned on what they, what they right. want. Right, yeah. But who knows, man? After the Beatles walk out of a studio, they may be saying to themselves, didn't get it again, man. Right, yeah. Because that's you don't know what right, they want, yeah, right? Right, you know, sounds as mighty good to us, of course. How about Blind Willie Johnson? Uh, Blind Willie Johnson, yeah, this is, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, Blind Willie Johnson and his wife Angelina, and uh, Blind Willie Johnson is particularly an interesting uh, slide style guitarist. Uh, he played nothing but uh, sacred music uh, during, uh, I guess, the 20s and 30s and so forth like that, you know, on the streets and all. And uh, his records are uh, valued by uh, old-time record collectors. And uh, this particular song, The Blues Project, also does. Anybody who's heard The Blues Project record that has Lord, I Just Can't Keep From Crying Sometime on it. It's the same song, and this is, uh, I guess, where they got it. Blind Willie Johnson. Thought I just came from crying sometimes And now I have the dollar And now I have to be there I keep from crying sometimes My mother often told me Ain't you born this love away? She said I wouldn't compile it, but trust then God and pray. I'm on the king highway, I'm struggling in my day, but I just can't keep from crying sometimes. Well, I just can't keep from crying sometimes. When my heart looks down I'm a mother, she's in glory. Thank God I'm on my way. Father, he's gone too. And so that she could not stay. I'm trusting him every day. And I'll bear my foot and way. Like I just can't keep from crying sometimes. Well, I just can't keep from crying sometimes. That's by Blind Willie Johnson. Lord, I just can't keep from crying. Our guests tonight are Jerry Garcia and Phil Ash from The Grateful Dead. Ray Charles is next on your schedule. Is this uh, early or late? Late. Very recently. It was his last, last single. Anyway. Last single. Yeah, early the latest. Do you think the stuff he's cut with uh, ABC has been as good as some of the things he cut with Anka? I think he was in, uh, it was in a much heavier blues bag, I think, earlier. The, yeah, I, I always liked the seven-piece stuff and the, with the Ray Letts and all like mm -hmm. that. It was real nice. Uh, but his yeah. big band is one of the tightest going. Yeah, there's some good big bands. Uh, I like the sound that the Bobby Bland group gets, too. Yeah. 
There's is a there's is a lot more uh, funky, I think, than Ray Charles. Yeah. James Brown, I think, actually has the best big band, the tightest. They're real snappy. Super disciplined. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. These two drummers. Too. Smoke on stage during rehearsal, ten bucks. Late for rehearsal, twenty five bucks. James keeps them in mind. Oh, I'll bet he mind. does. <laughs> Oh, Have you thought about that, Jerry? Uh, <laughs> keeping the boys in line. Too? <laughs> uh, let's try Ray Charles. I don't need no doctor. I don't need your doctor. We're going along with selections tonight from uh, Jerry Garcia and Phil Escher, The Grateful Dead, and James Brown, whom we were talking about a moment ago, is uh, on the list at the moment. Uh, you're picking some fairly recent stuff of James's, too. Yeah, the, the Man's 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 World is the one that seemed to me to use the strings first in a new way. Yeah. Like, uh, lots of people did records with strings, even jazz musicians, Terry Parker, Clifford Brown. And it was all mostly, like, little melodies. And uh, and uh, records in the background. But James Brown, and party stuff. And and, uh, and this is uh, recording uses the strings in a, in a kind of uh, percussive way. Yeah, very and, groovy. Uh, it sort of it sort of seems to me that uh, after that, then the Beatles came out and started using that stuff too. Only it, only it was it wasn't with uh, the instruments playing it. It was with manipulation of the tape, mm -hmm. like on Tomorrow Never Knows. It's violins. It's tape, man tape manipulation groups, spirals, sort of thing. Okay, let's do it. It's a man's, man's, man's world. Let me be like to take us out of the 
That's James Brown. It's a man's man's world. Uh, let's skip right to the next one, okay? James and Ain't That a Groove. This one speaks for itself. It's a groove. All the way. This is Tom Donahue where KMPX is 107 on your FM dial in San Francisco. Playing records 8 until midnight. Our guest tonight, Phil Larson, Jerry Garcia of The Grateful Dead. And here's James Brown.
One for the money, two for the show, ain't that a groove? Now here we go, going out. And one more thing I want to say, this is better than Christmas. Christmas only come once a year, this is all year round. This for a kid, I'm living, let me out, I'm gone. Ain't that a groove? That's James Brown, and that's from a very recent LP of his. Let's see if we can give you the exact title. It's just, it's a man's, man's, man's world. Amazing, sensational, thrilling soul brother number one. Whew. Doesn't really have a title, just James Brown. Working out on stage, Here's doing his, his entire thing. His yeah. Relatives. He's a, a fantastic showman. To lay another one on you. It, the act hasn't changed much. Uh, everybody has the same act in that business. Right. I saw the basic act, uh, maybe. <laughs> 56 at the Apollo, you know, it's been uh, right years. to them. But I think that's one of the things people dig about it, because they know they're going to get that, and that's what they want to see. And uh, he's uh, had a lot of imagination, because in his particular area of R&B singing, there are very few who would depart to sing the kind of songs he has on occasion. He's picked up some strange ballads and done them, and, you know. Well, it's a man's world. Man. Yeah, it's, really it's a man's world. Is, uh, yeah. Well, James is thinking in his own area. But uh, is he really happy? That's is he really happy? <laughs> <laughs> Smiles a lot, man, if that is anything. Seems happy. 